ਕਿਰ ਬਰ ਬਰ ਬਾਸ਼ੀ ਕਲ ਬਾ ਹਲ ਬਾਸ਼ੀ ਕਲ ਬਲ 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 ਬਾ ਹਨ ਮਨ ਮਾਹੀ ਸ਼ੀ ਕਲ ਬਾਸ਼ੀ ਕਿ ਰ ਰ ਰ ਰ ਰ ਰ ਰ ਰ ਰ ਰ ਰ ਰ ਰ ਹਿਰ ਬਾ ਹਿਸ਼ੀ ਕੋਲ ਕਲ ਬਾ ਕਲ 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 ਲ ਲ ਲ ਲ ਹਿਸ਼ੀ ਕਲ ਬਾ ਉਰ ਬਾਸ਼ੀ ਕਰ ਬਰ 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 ਬਾਸ਼ੀ ਕਰ ਬਰ ਬਾਸ਼ੀ ਕਰ ਬਰ 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 ਕਰ ਬਾਸ਼ੀ ਕਰ ਬਾਸ਼ੀ ਕਰ ਬ ਹਨ ਬਾਸ਼ੀ ਕਰ ਬਾਸ਼ੀ ਕਰ ਬਾਸ਼ੀ ਕਰ ਬਾਸ਼ੀ ਕਰ ਬਰ ਬਰ ਬਾਸ਼ੀ ਕਰ ਬਾਸ਼ੀ ਕਰ ਹਰ ਬਾਰ ਸ਼ਿਕਰ ਬਾਰ ਸ਼ਿਕਰ ਬਾਰ ਬਾਰ ਕਿਸੀ ਤਾਤਾ ਤੀਰ ਨਾਲਾ ਤੀ ਤੀ ਲੈ ਤੇ ਬਸ਼ਨ ਬਾਰ ਬਾਰ ਕਲਸ਼ਨ ਤੀ ਤੀ ਦੀ ਰਤਿਸ਼ਨ ਤੀ ਤੀ ਦੀ ਰੇ ਨਾਮ ਬੁਰ ਕਲਸ਼ਨ ਤੀ ਤੀ ਕਰਨਾ ਤਿਸ਼ੀ ਬਾਰ ਸ਼ਿਕਰ ਬਾਰ ਸ਼ਿਕਰ ਬਾਰ 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 praise you jesus thank you lord praise you lord hallelujah thank you jesus praise the lord okay we'll start the prayer does anybody want to do the prayer starting prayer no okay praise the lord in the name of the father and of the son and of the holy spirit amen heavenly father lord we thank you once again for this day thank you jesus thank you holy spirit lord as today we are going to study your word lord we uh, gather here once more again to learn your word let it be you who's teaching us this truth you who's making this teaching extremely simple and easy lord lord thank you for your love for your grace for your mercy it's always available for us lord help us to understand your love in depth to understand your grace in depth to understand your mercy in depth to understand your compassion in depth to understand your forgiveness in depth lord help us to understand your word deeply lord this word to be in our heart to wash our hearts to wash our minds to wash our mouths lord to only speak your word not to speak any word which is contradicting to the word to only think on your word not to think on anything which is contradicting to your word only to have your word in our heart only to plant seeds from your word in our heart not to plant seeds which this world gives us lord thank you jesus lord you have blessed us you have anointed us to be successful to experience your grace your mercy and your love jesus thank you for what you have done for us on the cross what you have accomplished for us on the cross that we may enjoy it even today lord what you have done for us 2000 years ago lord we can still enjoy it today lord and thank you lord that your wisdom is upon us you who's teaching us and you make this teaching extremely simple and easy and you confirm your own word with signs with wonders and with practical examples and with testimonies lord that we can see your glory manifesting with our physical eyes we thank you and we praise you lord in the glorious and mighty name of our lord jesus christ amen 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 praise the lord thank you jesus hallelujah okay praise god so um yesterday we were learning on the sin that came 
through because we are born from the rays of Adam. The sin came. Now we learn. Now we don't have to live in sin always. Because Jesus has done for us something on the cross, okay? He has done, he has accomplished for us something on the cross. Now, it is my decision whether I want to continue to live in sin or whether I want to be, to experience what he has done for me. Now, God is not forcing us, okay? You, you need to make this fix in your mind that God never forces. God has only given us the freedom of choice, the freedom to choose whether we want to live in sin or whether we want to live in righteousness. Now, and we see, okay, yesterday we were learning about the sin that came through Adam. The sin that entered into this world. Now, today we are learning on what can we do with the sin. Okay, praise the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Now, okay, if I want to be set free, free from sin, I have to be born again. So what is born again? What is born again? Anybody knows what is born again? No? Okay, praise God. We'll go to a scripture. Let's go to 1 Peter chapter 1, verse 23. Yeah, being born again, so it's talking about born again, being born again, not of corruptible seed, but of incorruptible by the word of God, which lives and abides forever. Now to understand how we are born again, first we need to understand what it's talking about the word. Now, the word of God is always living. It is active. It is powerful. Okay, we'll go to that scripture. Let's just go quickly to Hebrews chapter 4, verse 12. We'll see what, what it's talking about the word there. Hebrews chapter 4, verse 12. See this. For the word of God is quick and powerful. Okay, I'll ask you a question. Those who don't know, don't answer. Will is the word of God having power? Jai, do you know? Is the word of God having power? Yes. Okay, you say yes. Okay. The answer is no. The word of God does not have power. Now you look confused. The word of God does not have power. The word of God is power. And that's why it says the word of God is quick and powerful. So the word of God does not have power. The word of God itself is the power. So if, if you're saying uh, I'm, I'm speaking words which are in line with God's word and now I that power is manifesting means it is that word of God which is manifesting. Now what do you mean by the word power? You know, what is the definition of power? Okay, power is a force that replaces the old with new. Okay, power is a force that replaces the old with the new. So, now I'll give an example for power. If, okay, there is dark, the, okay, this room is full of darkness. Now, if you turn on the switch, what will happen? The light will come. So that light, that energy of light is a force, okay, that replaces the old darkness with the new, which is light. So the force, okay, that power, that force, okay, on that switch, it will, it will replace the darkness with light. In the same way, okay, the word of God can replace anything from this world. Because it's that powerful. If there is sickness, the, the word of God can bring healing. 
If there is poverty, the word of God can bring abundant life. If there is uh, fear, God, the word of God can bring faith. So, for the word of God is quick and is powerful. Now, the word of God in operates in two realms. Okay, one. Okay, it's sharper than any two-edged sword. We are say given to the dividing ascender of soul and spirit, and of the joints and marrow, and is a discerner of the thoughts and intents of the heart. Now, the word of God can deal with two realms. One realm is the physical realm with my body. That's why it says, and of the joints and marrow. And this word of God can deal, okay, with the dividing ascender of soul and spirit. Because for this world, okay, they just think there's a soul and body. Because the spirit and the soul, they might be thinking is the same. But if I want to understand what the difference is, it can only be with the word of God. Because the word of God is dividing. So it divides. The, the ascender of soul and spirit and it also does something in the spiritual realm is it's a discerner of the thoughts and intents of the heart so what it means is discerner of the thoughts and intents of the heart if i want to know if this thought is in line with god's word or not in line with god's word how can i know Through the word, because the word is a discerner. If the thought is not in line with God's word, means it's come from the kingdom of darkness. If it is in line with God's word, means it's come from the kingdom of God. And that's how the word of God uh, discerns whether it's come from God or from the devil. But I, I can only discern with that word. So it's doing two things in the spiritual realm. It is dividing and showing you the difference of the soul and the spirit. And it is discerning what is coming from God, the thoughts which are the thoughts and intents which are coming of God or not coming from God. And also it works in the physical realm. It will go inside your joints, means your bones and your marrow, and it will complete make you completely make you healed and anything which is there which is not according to how God created you, it will be repaired. Are you understanding? Yes, so when you say the word of God is quick and powerful, okay, that is what the word of God is. This whole scripture is talking about the word. So let's go back to 1 Peter chapter 1, verse 23. Yes, so by the word of god so but of incorruptible by the word of god which lives and abides forever now the word of god is eternal it is everlasting it will be a, you know that's why the word of god says okay heaven and earth will pass away but his word will not pass away there's a scripture saying christ is the same yesterday today and forever and we see in john 1 1 and hebrews 1 1 and 2 that or in the second was sorry that well, hebrews 1 2 that that word himself is jesus so if christ jesus jesus christ is the same yesterday today and forever means the word of god is the same yesterday and today and forever now when was the word of god written 2000 years ago but still can can't you get a healing out of it yes can't you get a, any a manifestation out of it yes because that word has so much power even today you can get a manifestation out of it so i'm born again okay not of corruptible seed but of incorruptible by the word of god which lives and uh, bites forever now the word of god is a seed the word of god is a seed now what 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 is a seed what ability does a seed have do you know do you know what ability does a seed have okay a seed has an ability to multiply Okay, because you know it, it, it goes continuously on. First, you plant a seed, you get okay, example apple, okay, tree. You first plant a seed, you get apples. Inside the apples, you get more seeds. If you plant those seeds again, one more tree will come, and it continues on and on, right? 
So a seed has an ability to multiply. Is God okay? Now God created everything with a seed. Let's go to Genesis chapter one, verse eleven. Okay, and God said, okay, let the earth bring forth grass, the herb yielding seed, and the fruit tree yielding fruit after his kind, whose seed it is in itself upon the earth, and it was so. Now we see here. Okay, God did not just say, "Let there be a fruit tree." Correct. He never said, "Let there be a fruit tree. Let there be this. Let there be grass. Let there be that." He's he's going so deep and saying, "Let okay the earth bring forth grass, the herb yielding seed." And the fruit tree yielding fruit after his kind, whose seed is in itself. So anything that God has created, anything and everything that God has created, God has created with seed in it. So we are also okay. We are also born through the seed of the mother and the father. Correct? Can you go back to one Peter one twenty three? Praise the Lord in Can you put one Peter chapter one verse twenty three? Okay. Being born again, not of corruptible seed. Now we're all born from a corruptible seed that is from our mother and our father, correct? We are born from the mother's womb. Am I correct? Yes. And when you are born from corruptible seed, means we are all have sin in us. But we see Jesus. Jesus was born of the incorruptible seed, which is the word of God. Which is okay. He was born by the power of the Holy Spirit. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit. That's what the word of God says. Mother Mary was overshadowed by the power of the Holy Spirit. So, Jesus, he was born of incorruptible seed. He was not born corruptible. He was of the corruptible seed from the mother's womb. He was born of incorruptible seed, which is the word of God. And that's the same today with us. If we are born again, okay, when we accept Jesus as our Lord, God, Master, and Savior, now we are completely new in our spirit okay we are born again that means we are born from an incorruptible seed which is the word because somebody came to me spoke about the preached to me the gospel spoke to me about jesus and when he did that now i am born again so if i'm not born again there is no way for us to live a godly life a person might be wanting to live free from sin. He doesn't want to cause sin, commit sin. But how can he do that? Only when he's born again. It's just like, you know, a person might be trying, okay, uh, by his own works to live a godly life, to show that I'm praying, I'm doing everything. But that will not work. If you're trying to fast, pray, go to church, get up morning and speak the scriptures, it will not work. That's not called born again. I'm not saying you should not do those things. You're doing those things because you are uh, praying. Okay. But if you want to be born again, it is only by God's word. When you accept that God's word is real, when you accept Jesus as your Lord and Savior, okay, now that's called born again. So you, you can't just say, I'm born again, like this, I'm born again, I believe in Jesus. A person might be saying, I believe in Jesus. 
but he doesn't know what Jesus has done for me on the cross. He doesn't know the word. He's the biggest liar. Because if you don't have the word, you can never be born again. That's what the scripture is saying. We are born again of incorruptible seed by the word of God. There's that scripture by the word of God. There's a phrase in there. You can't just say I'm born again, I'm born again, I'm born again. No. It's God. So I, I can differentiate whether a person is born again or not. It is on the word of God. If a person has the word of God, knows the word of God, and he accepts Jesus as his Lord, God, and Savior means that person is born again. But if we, okay, don't, okay, uh, accept the word of God means you're not born again, really. That's just saying I do it by my works. Can you put Ephesians 2, 8 and 9? See this. For by grace are you saved through faith, and that not of yourselves. It is the gift of God. Okay, so does it say, for by grace are you saved through faith and that of yourselves, it is not the gift of God. Does it say like that? No, it says it is the gift of God. Means I'm born again, not by my efforts. I experience grace, not through my efforts. I don't have to labor hard. You know, if a person is saying through my sweat, I'm qualified to go to heaven, he's the one, a candidate who's going to hell. Because I can only go to heaven now. Look at this. For by grace are you saved. You receive the salvation. You're saved. It is by that grace. But if you want to be saved, that grace, that grace, gospel of grace will be preached to you. Now it is through your faith. God is not telling you to work hard and labor and put all your effort and through your sweat you'll qualify for heaven. No, it's just saying believe. Faith, and that not of yourselves, it is the gift of God, not of works, lest any man should post. Okay, so if, okay, we see here, okay, he's saying, not of works, lest any man should boast. So what is the nature of man? What is the nature of man to boast? <coughs> Excuse me. The nature of man is to boast. But here we see it's saying, do not boast. If I do want to have that nature, that man's nature, that sin nature, I can only be born again if I want to experience God's grace and not more of any works. Are you understanding? Yes. So, okay, if you're saying I'm born again, but you don't have the word, are you really born again? No. Okay. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. So, now, we see in the Bible, Paul and Silas, okay, they casted out a demon from a lady, a demon of fortune telling, okay? So, the people who used to make business from her, okay, they got very angry because the lady never, now she couldn't fortune tell. So, they got very angry and, okay, they spread, they took the, the Paul and Silas upon the public and they, they shared upon and they finally were in the prison. So, for the whole night, okay, they were crying, they were begging. They have, they, you know, Saul was, Silas, not Saul, sorry. Silas was uh, saying, Paul, because of you, now I'm also in this situation. And Paul was like, Lord, why did you do this? Why did you do that? Was he like that? Come on, was he like that? No, okay, Jehai was saying no. So how was he? What was he doing? What were Paul and Silas doing? I can't hear you. You're mute. They were worshipping God. 
they were worshiping God, right? If you were in that place, what would you do? I would mourn. Mourn, cry. You would, you know, uh, I was uh, sharing this with, you know, my first day of preaching, okay, on the JCILM, okay, uh, I was preaching on that how to be joyful in the midst of trials, and it came about Paul and Silas. I asked Sister Joseph, "What would you do?" She said, "I said, I said, God will protect her. I said, Psalm, Psalm ninety-one. Why didn't you save me, Lord?" I remember that. Now we would complain, we would moan, we would be sad, we would cry, we would weep. But what were they doing? They were also weeping, weeping of for joy, correct? They were praising God so much, correct? Yes. Praise God. And now there was a supernatural earthquake. Now this earthquake didn't hurt anyone. But the prison doors were open, the chains broke, and they were going, they could be set free, they could go, they could escape. Now at that time there was a jailer. And this jailer was responsible to look after all the people in the prison, not for them to escape. But now he saw all the doors are open, the whole prison doors are open. That means they must have escaped. Because what will be your nature if the doors were open? What would you do? We would have uh, escaped, right? Yeah. But what did they do? Did they ex did they escape? No. They never escaped. They were okay, just praising God, even though the doors opened and everything happened, they never escaped. And at that time, if a person escapes, okay, the jailer will be killed. So the jailer tries to kill himself instead of instead of being killed uh, torturously, why don't he kill himself here only? So he was trying to kill himself, the jailer. Then would Paul would Paul and Silas would shout out, no, 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 don't okay, kill yourself. We are all here. Now let's go to Acts chapter 16 verse 29 to 31. Chapter 16 was 29 to 31. Yeah. Do you want to read? Anybody wants to read? Jehaya, do you want to read? Yeah. All the three verses. So from 29 to 31, right? Yes, yes. Then he called for a light and sprang in and came trembling and fell before, down before Paul and Silas and brought them out and, say, and said, Sirs, what, was, what must I do to be saved? And they said, believe, believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be saved in thy house. Okay, now we see in verse 30, okay? And brought them out and said, Sirs, what must I do to be saved? Now, we mostly think, if I want to be accepted by God, if I want to be saved, I have to do something. Do you think like that? Yeah, I have to do something from my side to be saved. We think I have to do something for God to accept me. We think I have to pray, I have to fast, I have to uh, study the scriptures, I have to get a prayer clock, I have to go walking, I have to, to give tithes, I have to do so many things. And now I'm not saying you should not do those things. Those things are because you love God and you're worshipping him, you're honoring him. Some people, they kneel down. I'm not saying you should not do that. You're just worshipping, praising him, glorifying him. But to be saved, we don't have to do anything. Because Jesus Christ has done it for us. And that's why he came on this earth. He came on this earth and he did everything for us on the cross that we are set free. Can you go to uh, Can you go to John chapter 10 verse 10? Okay. 
the thief okay do you want to read jahaya yes the thief come not come not but for to steal and to kill and to destroy i am come that they might have life and they might have it more abundantly okay now did it say okay the thief comes to steal kill and destroy right yes yes did it say the thief the thief comes to steal kill and destroy okay but i want you to study the word i want you to go to church i want you to fast i want you to pray i want you to give tithes i want you to make rosary i want you to get up 3 o'clock i want to make you this prayer i want you to make that prayer i want you to kneel down i want you to cry i want you to worship me i i want you to bow down to me and then okay you might have life and have it more abundantly correct no what does it say that i am come that they might have life and that they might have it more abundantly so is it our responsibility to to have our life abundantly no some people they have they, they buy a big car they have a big house they buy three cars four cars seven cars they do this they do that they want money they want this now are they trying to live an abundant life by themselves Yes, but is Jesus saying that? No. Is Jesus saying, "Oh, uh, you have to live a abundant life by yourself"? No. He is saying, "I will do it for you." Yes. I will do it for you. So if I want, okay, if this world is, they're trying to live an abundant life by themselves. They're trying to do something by themselves. You see, in okay, in Genesis, okay, we see Joseph. Did he do anything by himself to become a governor? No. no. He, he only depended went, on God. Yeah, he only went where God told him. If he, you know, what he did in the master's house. You know what he was doing? He was studying how the law works, because okay, God had put him there so that he can study God. the law how the law works of the egypt how the egyptians are and all those things how the egypt works so okay god okay has has uh, you know has a plan for us and when we are walking in the way of life i am not supposed to say how can i make my life abundance be full of abundance now when you say abundance doesn't mean that uh, like uh, having uh, hundreds and thousands of money no that's what this world thinks but um abundant means when you're saying i have a strong connection with god because life means connection with god i have a strong connection with god this connection will never break now jaya do you have a uh, internet connection Yes. Yes. Okay. Now, until you put the pass on your on the device, okay. Example, our TV. It will not work until you have the internet. Yes. So, do you have to put the password so that it that it can connect? Yes. Yes. Then it will connect, and then you can watch anything. It will work. Correct. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Now, once you put that password, will it have a strong internet connection? Yes. Okay, because in you know here even in my house we have a absolutely strong connection. It will have a, sometimes it might break, but it will have a good connection. It will not break suddenly just like that, right? Yeah. Yes. Yes. In the same way, okay, God has given us. Okay, we are we have to be connected to Him. And if God, if we want God to be connected to us, we need to put a password. You know what password is that? Mm. The word of God. The word of God is the password. Once I put the password, when I start to meditate on the password, now I can have a complete strong connection with God. Now this connection will not break. A connection full of abundance. So okay, because uh, abundance means it will it. Lot will not break. So now, when I have a abundant, uh, you know, a normal, a good, strong connection with God, it can never break. And that's what happened to Jesus. 
Jesus had a strong connection with God. A strong connection with God. Praise the Lord. And that's the same with us, okay? That thief tries to come and to comes to steal, to kill, and to destroy, to break this connection, okay? Trying to bring death in us. But, okay, we have this strong connection. We should try not, we, we have the word of God. With this word of God, the, the, we have to fight back so this connection will never break. This internet connection will never break. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. And now, this connection is personal. Praise God. Are you understanding? Yes. Any questions so far? No. Nope. No? Okay. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. So, okay. Now, how do we get this connection? Do you know? Oh, one minute. Do the password, okay? But can you just say, okay, a normal person walking down the street, okay, I'll give him the password and then he will have connection with God? No. No, because first there's something that has to happen first. So that person, once this happens, he can study the word. So what that thing has to happen? You know? No. Okay, born again. Because if he doesn't believe in Jesus, how will he study the word? Because he doesn't believe in Jesus, why does he need to study the word? Correct? So, the first thing is, when that person is born again, when that sin is removed, okay, now when that person is born again now, that is the time this per that, that person can now build his connection with God, build his relationship with God. And that's what we see for Jesus. We'll take an example of Jesus. Jesus has a, such a strong internet connection with God, a connection with God. It never broke. It never broke. It was so strong that even if there's any persecution coming, anything coming, he was saying like, it will. I will never reject Paul. He had such a connection with God that even if uh, persecution came, dis destruction came, people came against him, he, he never broke the connection. Are you having that? Are we having that same connection? We are supposed to. And if I want to have this connection, I need a password called the Word of God. Now, when I make this pa password the Word of God, okay, when I study this password now, I will be able to connect with God. Because if I want to understand God's will, now, when you say you have a relationship with someone, you understand how they are, their nature. So if I want to understand how God's nature, can I see him physically? No. So how will I understand his nature? By the Word of God. By the word of God, exactly. You know, it's by the word of God that I can understand God's will, God's nature, God's desire. If a person is saying, I know God's desire, but he doesn't have the word, is it truth that he knows the desire? No. Because he might be saying, God is cursing, God is punishing, God is doing all this. He didn't understand it because of that law which gets activated, the law of sin and death that he is experiencing death in his life. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Are you understanding? Yes. Any questions? No? Okay. Praise God. So, we think, okay, so we see in the, let's go back to Acts. Acts. Chapter 16, verse 29 to 31. Okay. 
Yeah. Good from KGB. Putting the spot. Yeah. Okay. Then, okay. Somebody who wants to read, you can read. Who wants to read? Knock, Jaya. Anybody wants to read? No. Mm. I'll read. Yeah, you can read. Then he called for a light and sprang in and came trembling and fell down before Paul and Silas and brought them out and said, Sirs, what must I do to be saved? And they said, Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be saved and thy house. Okay, praise the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Okay. And they said, okay, so verse 31. So what is Paul and Silas replying? Okay. He's saying, and they said, believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and you shall be saved. Not only you, your whole household. See this, you know, you see in Amplified, okay? And they answered, believe in the Lord Jesus as your personal saver and entrust him, your entrust yourself to him and you will be saved and your household if they believe. So they have to believe that they may be saved. But first, you have to change. When you change, they will change. Now they can see, wow, your life is so absolutely and they see wow jesus is really real because he's working in your life in such a way and now that's the time they are born again praise the lord thank you jesus so paul is paul and silas are replying to him believe on the lord jesus that's what i have to do we saw in Ephesians 2 8 for by grace what by jesus's grace we are saved we only have to believe nothing else we have to do don't have to work hard don't have to labor nothing Praise the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. So, because there's nothing I can do to be accepted. If a person is saying, I kept all the law, because I kept all the law, I've accepted. He's the biggest liar because nobody can keep all the law. Only one person kept all the law. Do you know who it is? Jesus. Jesus, yeah. Only Jesus kept all the law. No other person or human being kept the law because he came, he was born of the incorruptible seed because we have sin in us okay we can't you know that that law was not given for us to obey the law was given to show that we are sinners so the only thing that i can do is to believe in jesus christ which the gospel which believes in uh, which preaches when a person comes and preaches to me when i believe that gospel now i'm born again Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. So, okay, I, I can't do anything to be saved. The only the thing is what I can do is to believe. When I believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, now I'm saved. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Okay, praise God. So, any questions? Anything? No, any testimonies? No. Okay, praise the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Anybody wants to prayers? Any prayers? Anybody wants? Shaili, Jehaya, Nok. No. Or your family member or somebody. Okay, praise God. Thank you, Jesus. No? Okay, praise the Lord. Okay, then we'll do an ending prayer. Anybody wants to do the ending prayer? Jihaya, Shaili, no? no. Okay, praise the Lord. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Heavenly Father, Lord, we thank you once again for this day, for this moment, for this time. We thank you, Lord. We praise you, Lord. We glorify you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, our Father, Lord. Thank you for this wonderful day. Thank you, Lord, that you love us and you have given us this wonderful day, Lord. 
Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Abba, Father, Lord. Help us to be born again, to live an abundant life, to live a glorious life, to build and make this connection stronger and stronger with you. We thank you, Lord. We praise you. We glorify you, Lord. We thank you, Jesus. We thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Lord, for teaching us this truth. Help us to apply this truth in our life where we can see your glory manifesting in our life. We thank you, Jesus. We thank you, Holy Spirit. We thank you, our Father. Thank you, Lord. This session is blessed, anointed, and it's helping everyone that's watching on Zoom right now or even on YouTube, Lord. Thank you. And we praise you, Lord, in the glorious and mighty name of our Lord, Jesus Christ. Amen. 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 Okay. Amen. We can we can pray in tongues. <laughs> Thank you, Jesus. Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Praise you, Lord. Praise God. Okay, praise the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Okay, praise God. Okay, just.